Sometimes you just need a change. To step outside of your comfort zone and challenge the boundaries of what your everyday life consists of. And whilst I always enjoy discussion on improving and developing new experimental methods for a recording EVP, years of successful communication with speakers in unknown dimensions have whetted our appetite to push aside the curtains of history for once, to journey into the present. At opposite ends of the UK, we sat in front of our monitors. Our call would be just over two hours. I recorded only the audio with an Olympus VN2100 for later review. Having practiced prior uncontrolled remote viewing exercises, I had attempted to put my naive and untested skills to use. Remote EVP sessions are technically uneventful for the most part. However, this session was challenging in the extreme. Both hardware and software refused to function consistently. As soon as I was joined online, the dictaphone batteries died and a confirmatory voice was captured when the reserve machine was switched on. The stories from Skinwalker Ranch in Nevada intrigue me. It isn't purely the paranormal activity of the poltergeist at Homestead 2, or the familiar floating balls of light, it's also the energy fields, coupled with UFO activity. Having watched a recent episode of The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch, when members of the group were buzzed by low-flying military aircraft, I was puzzled why they would still have an interest. If Robert Bigelow's investigations had concluded, and the ranch had been sold to a civilian, are we being told the truth? We wanted to know more, so use the communication channels open to us to see if we could glean further information. I should not have been surprised that my planned trip would already be known to those outside of my inner circle. There's something that I can't quite get my head around. When Dr. Travis Taylor joined the Skinwalker program, my curiosity was aroused. Why would a DOD and NASA astrophysicist be conducting experiments on the ranch? Are we to believe that his introduction of motives for being present genuinely remained hidden to the team until the present series? Is the show purely entertainment, a palatable form of propaganda? The former owner, Robert Bigelow, has not released data gathered during the period of his ownership of the ranch, for it goes without saying, anything of note would have been provided to certain agencies. Did Bigelow buy the ranch for himself, or was he just a frontman for a military operation? One thing is for sure, somebody doesn't want us digging on the subject. Whether they are this side of life or the other remains open to question. And he only came clean last series. It was at this point in our discussion we realised that our connection was not private. Someone had gate crashed our call. Well, there you are, we're being watched. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me, but. Familiarising ourselves with the Skinwalker Ranch site, my colleague and I review aerial maps. The topography of the land can clearly be seen. We had two sites of interest, the phenomena at Homestead 2 and the Triangle area, which has been heavily featured on the TV series and correlates with an undetermined broadcast signal at 1.6 GHz, oddly the same frequency as a satellite phone would be. Who was the speaker sitting beside me as we explored the ground near to Homestead 2? Were they related to activity on the ranch, or merely a chance visitor looking over my shoulder? 
Can you see the layers down the bottom so you can actually see the yeah, hand see and not the... Well... Our attention then focused on the triangle. Doing my best to engage with speakers whom we knew to be listening, I asked for information as to what may be buried under the surface. Whomever replies makes it clear my line of questioning isn't welcome. What's underneath the triangle, folks? Can you tell me? Are you allowed to? <laughs> As further episodes roll on, a gut feeling leaves me increasingly suspicious with the ranch. Whatever the series' purpose, there's a lot of money tied up in the Skinwalker franchise, and if a significant anomaly is isolated and traced, I feel sure those in control would not share the information. Of course, I might be wrong. I hope I am. We all want to believe, don't we? Hidden inside of an Alaskan mountain, close to Mount McKinney, or Denali as it's now called, is an alleged top secret government facility, the Dark Pyramid. Intriguing stories from those who have claimed to have visited the site tell of an alien workforce and the pyramid's potential capacity to provide power for the whole of North America. Many locals and visitors have gone missing whilst visiting the area, despite most being well versed in survival techniques and equipped to deal with any inclement weather. Sadly, a field trip to Alaska is out of the question. I would gladly jump on a plane and head into the wilderness for a few weeks, but I'm not convinced I would return in one piece, or at all. But is it really necessary for us to be physically present at a location? to communicate and record those we contact through EVP. Because let's face it, the people we're contacting aren't in our dimension. No, that's true. Possessing the ability to remote view a distant location and interact physically in that local dimension may be a latent skill we all possess. Ingo Swan's sessions of observing activity on the moon reportedly featured telepathic content with non-human life forms, illustrating a human capability to travel to dimensions outside of our physical bodies at will whilst being fully conscious in our state of reality. To do a recording and capture voices from the location that you're remote viewing. I don't see why it isn't possible. Release documents from the Stargate project are held in John Greenwood Jr.'s excellent site, theblackvault.com. It includes not only analysis of the efficacy of the procedure as a tool, but warnings and protocols for its practice. I would encourage all who feel drawn to the subject to explore the archive. It's well worth a deep dive. As I relaxed one evening, my mind spontaneously wandered. As my vision cleared, I was walking on a brilliantly lit snowfield. The air was crisp and nothing was around me, aside from the small hut I was moving towards. Going through the door, I found myself in a dark room with no windows. There were no features other than a brush metal floor and a steel frame. The whole room appeared to be a lift. The descent was long, and as I journeyed down, my apprehension grew. I exited the doors. There was a heavy military presence, and I wasn't prepared. Recounting my experiences to my colleague, a speaker acknowledges me. The phrase is common in recordings and I've captured many similar responses over the years, but this one makes me cautious. Was I being observed through our call, or was my presence witnessed at the facility? Of where they are. It's like a room, but it's not a room, it's a lift. <laughs> Of 
For the last 20 years or so, I've spoken of how I began recording for EVP and the happiness I've found through communicating with those in alternate states of reality. But it's only now, when I'm not beholden to an employer, that I dared make this video. Raising your head above the parapet on certain subjects is never without risk, personally or professionally. You know, you want to share the good news and you get... It was time for bed, but before I turned in, Holly, my dog, would need to go outside. Walking out to the front paddock, I looked up at the sky. The night was calm and the stars were twinkling beautifully. Approximately 600 metres to the south, a helicopter shone a bright spotlight onto Fairford's runway. After five or so minutes of watching my dog sniffing around the field, my awareness snapped. It suddenly dawned on me that I couldn't hear the aircraft's rotor blades. Turning to look at the helicopter, the searchlight instantaneously flicked off. It was an odd sensation, as if it was aware that I had seen it. Then it shot at least half a mile westward behind the trees, without making a sound. It was then deep fear took hold. And then it reappeared. Pivoting above the trees, its path was directly towards me. I've lived besides, or close to military bases, for most of my adult life, and what I saw made no sense. I felt rising panic and consigned myself to witnessing something that might be the last thing I ever saw. I became hyper aware. But seconds later, everything changed. A gentle blanket of peace and stillness settled over me. The fear had gone, and as I watched the craft silently gliding towards me at walking pace, I was filled with excitement. I was seeing something incredible. My eyes strained to see a pilot in the light, but I saw nothing. I would estimate its altitude as being no more than 60 metres on approach. It only just skimmed the top of the surrounding trees. Now standing underneath, I looked up. There were no markings, just three circles of white light. Its triangular shape was clearly silhouetted against the stars. Its movement was fluid as it glided silently. Watching as the craft passed over me in a northeast direction, I felt sad that the experience was already over. The following week, I had a wonderfully vivid dream. I was in the cockpit of a craft who what appeared to be a grey alien. And whilst the counts described them as being devoid of emotions, this being seemed curious of my interest and was willing to show me the capabilities of the craft. Our communication was telepathic, respectful, and it felt completely natural. Asking how it was piloted, I was directed to place my hand in a recessed area of a flat surface and to allow my mind to give the direction and speed of flight. A visual panel in front of me showed our flight and it was then I woke up. I tried my best to go back to the dream, but it was gone. Every night I went into the paddock with the hope of seeing the craft again, but I never did. Understandably, I told nobody at the time. Years later, I had a discussion with XMOD bod Nick Pope, who suggested it may have been a test flight of Aurora, or another plane in development. I was familiar with the F-117 stealth fighter and Northrop B-2 bomber. Both have considerable engine noise in low-level flight. It was none of these. I know what I saw. My colleague and I laughed at how our conversation would be construed by those listening in. Two batty old researchers discussing experiences that society on the whole likes to ignore. It had been a fun evening trying something different, and our friends clearly enjoyed our discussion, and we hope you did too. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with us today. 
please do return for another EVP adventure in the future. Bye for now.